Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum dear viewers and welcome to the 14 pillars, the Ahlul Bayt alayhum as -salam, for everyone, our Ramadan special here on Imam Hussain TV where today we are discussing the important topic of how to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My name is Sister Sayyidah Mahdi and I'm joined by Sister Dua. Sister Assalamu alaikum and welcome. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Thank you once again for joining us for our Ramadan special. Inshallah your Ramadan is going well and inshallah your fasting is going well too, inshallah sister. So this topic, how to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can say is of particular importance, especially in this holy month of Mahi Ramadan. Now, we, we know that we always want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our aim is to grow closer to Him by following the teachings of the Holy Ahlul Bayt alayhum as -salam. But sometimes in the society that we live in, especially where we have social media around us or we have peer pressure around us, not just our children, but us as young mothers, sometimes it may be a battle where we yearn to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to be those who are the servants of the Ahlul Bayt alayhum as -salam. But we find ourselves in a trap between wanting to please Allah and also wanting to fit into society by wanting to fit in to the social circles that we may belong in within the communities that we are in. And our children may face this within the schools or the madrasas that they attend. And often, sometimes this can lead to sin. So let's open up today's topic of conversation by looking at what happens, sister, when we are in a trap in between wanting to please Allah and also finding ourselves falling into a trap where we are being pulled into the social circles, often going towards sin. What happens when we are finding ourselves in between these circumstances? You know, the strange thing of a human being is that <clears throat> we try to satisfy people and please them. And we spend our life day and night trying to satisfy human beings when they themselves, they cannot possess satisfaction towards themselves. Have you seen people? If I go to Maldives, I'm going to be happy. That's it. I'm satisfied. They go, they come back, they're still not happy. If I buy this... That's it, I'm happy. They go, they buy what they want, they spend all their money and they're not happy. If I do this, I'm gonna be happy. They go, they do what they, they're not happy. They cannot possess satisfaction for themselves. They cannot fend death for themselves. They cannot fend illness for themselves. What can they benefit you? On the other hand, you cannot even reach their satisfaction. You don't know how to satisfy them. Have you seen people where you spend all your life, you do whatever they tell you to do, just you wanna please them and they're still not pleased. You want them to be satisfied and they're not satisfied. You run, you spend all your life until you reach a dead end. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's the opposite. One, you're able to please him and satisfy him by critical roles. Halal, haram, obligatory, prohibited. Two, it's easy to satisfy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were pleased and he was pleased. So you're able to. Human beings, find me one person that says, I was able to please people. And no one hates me. And no one dislikes me. And everyone's pleased. It's something that Allah didn't create in a human being. As for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're able to reach it. Halal, haram. Have you seen people? You give them something. They don't accept it. You do this much for them. They're not pleased. Allah, ya man yaqbulu yaseer. Oh, you in Dua Kumail, who you accept the few. Ya Sari Arrava. Oh, you who we quickly are able to please. You do a sin, Allah forgive me, Allah forgives you. This month of Ramadan is the door of asking Allah for forgiveness. Allah has his doors open. Come, repent. I'll give you forgiveness. Have you seen people? You do one small mistake, run after them. They won't forgive you. Run after them day and night. Maybe for one phone call, you know. They call you, you didn't pick up, that's it. They cut all connections. Try to explain, no, that's it, we're done. Allah, you do the biggest sin and you feel guilty and you repent, Allah will accept it. Ya sari ar Oh, you who quickly is able to forgive. People, you're not able to satisfy them. 
So you know how mad human beings are? Is that we spend all our lives trying to satisfy human beings that they cannot satisfy themselves and they will never be satisfied no matter what you do. But the way to look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala satisfaction pleasing him, when one, you're able to please him, two, you give him the least, he accepts it. The few a'mal that we do, he accepts it. And then he accepts our forgiveness and you're able to reach it. We don't look at that. And last point that I want to talk about is that there's always a side that's unpleased. Always. Football player. Who likes the referee? Nobody. If the referee would stand out with team B, team A doesn't like them. If the referee would stand with team A, team B doesn't like them. Whatever your job is, your career is, at work, you'd always face someone that is pleased with you and the other who's not. Whatever you do, someone is pleased, the other is not. You can have children. Half will be pleased, the other half will not be pleased. Half will be like, my mom did everything good for me. Half will be like, no, I never gotten anything good. There's always a part, someone will be pleased, others wouldn't be pleased. Everything that you do in this life. And you know what's funny? Is that it flips over. Those who weren't pleased are pleased and those who aren't pleased are, you know? Human beings, we have these mood swings, those mood changes. We are insane to the, to the state that our mood changes is that we, you see someone you love, you're smiling, and then someone passes by that you have a range towards, you know, this incident changes. You get angry, you get mad. We have mood swings. Today, they vote for you. Tomorrow, they ask for your head to be beheaded. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no, you're able to reach a satisfaction. I really like the way that you use the comparison of how we... Sometimes we want and we want the materialistics within this world and it doesn't satisfy us. And no matter sometimes how much you do for others, they'll never be satisfied or happy with you. But even if you do the iota amount for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the, with the purest of near, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts because he's so merciful and he's so just. And even if you do the biggest of sin, he forgives because he's so just and he's so merciful. So you do a small amount, he accepts. You do a large sin, he forgives. It just shows how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And just by going on to that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran in Surah Baqarah, um, verse 222 says, for Allah loves those who turn to him long standing in repentance. Now, those who constantly repent those who constantly do istighfar and ask for forgiveness. This is a way of gaining closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah loves this. His servant who asks for forgiveness constantly. Just like in the other episode, we, sp we spoke about the merits of reciting salawat. There's also merits for us. We are the ones who need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. He then goes on in Surah Ala Imran, verse 146, to say, Allah loves those who are firm and steadfast, patient and sabr. So there's numerous ways of how we can please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and gain closeness to Him. So my next question to you, sister, is looking at these Quranic ayats, how can we please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You know, the answer with this is with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and peace be upon him, says, Inna Allah yarda. Rida is pleasing, satisfying, pleasing. Inna Allah yarda li rida Fatima wa yaskhat li sakhati Fatima. When Lady Fatima alayhi salam, she's satisfied, it's the satisfaction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When she's angered, it's the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now here's a question that is linked to our aqidah, our doctrine, and has to do with monotheism. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us human beings, and we have these incident changes. So we change with, within the incidents. So for example, to make it clear, um, we love, we hate, we're pleased, we're unpleased, we're angered, we're happy. These are incident changes, you know, um, you're sitting down, you're happy, you're laughing, and as someone gives you a call and gives you bad news, you cry and you weep. These are incident changes. Is Allah limited to those? Hasha lillah. No. Allah created it for human beings. 
We are the one who are limited by those incident changes. One day we're mad, one day we're happy, one day we're satisfied, one day we're unsatisfied. One day we love a friend, the other day we're against this friend. One day we love this kind of meal, the other day we dislike this meal. Allah doesn't have these. Allah created for human beings those incident changes. So is it possible that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Lady Fatima is satisfied and pleased, he's pleased? Allah is not a follower. Hashalillah. Allah does not follow anybody. And when she's angered, he gets angry? He's angered? Hashalillah. Allah is not a follower. So what does Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi means when he says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَرْضَى لِرِضَى فَاطِمَ وَيَخْضَبْ لِغَضَبِهَا أَوْ يَسْخَطْ لِسَخَطِهَا What does that mean? What does those thousands of narration and verses mean in the Holy Quran? إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحُبُّ الْمُحْسَنِينَ Allah loves those who do good. Love. What's the opposite of love? Hate. Does Allah love and hate? So he has these incident changes? No. In Wasa'al al-Shia by Hur al-Amri, Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, he says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ لَا يَأْسَفْ كَأَسَفِنَا وَلَكِنْ خَلَقَ لَهُ أَوْلِيَاءُ مَعْصُومُونَ جَعَلَ رِضَاهُمْ رِضَى نَفْسِهِ وَسَخَطَهُمْ سَخَطَ نَفْسِهِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created His honorable messengers, Ahlul Bayt alayhi salatu salam, who are pure. They don't do sins. And they're honorable. جَعَلَ رِضَاهُمْ رِضَى نَفْسِهِ He attributed their satisfaction, their pleasing to His. وَغَضَبَهُمْ سَخَطَهُمْ Their anger to his attribution. He attributed it to him. So if we want to know how to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to know if we're pleasing Lady Fatima alayhi salam or if we're angering Lady Fatima alayhi salam. She angry upon us. MashaAllah, you know, this is a beautiful way of looking at it. That if we please say the Fatima salamullahi alayha, who we call our mother, if we please her, then in turn Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with us. If we anger her and we upset her, in turn Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is angry and upset with us. So really Sayyidina Fatima salamullahi alayha is the key for us. She's the one by pleasing her, inshaAllah, we will be entering paradise. With her shafa, by pleasing her, by loving Hussein, by pleasing the Ahlul Bayt alayhum as -salam. they are the key holders for us to enter paradise, inshaAllah. Now we know the love that we have for Sayyidina Fatima sallallahu alayhi and we know the status of Sayyidina Fatima sallallahu alayhi in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why has she been chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be the one, the key, for us to enter paradise, the key for Allah's happiness. And why not any other Imam? Why not any other Prophet? Why not our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him as well? Why is she the one who holds the key for us? You know, this goes, this narration that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says it goes for all the Imams, all of them. Whenever they're angered, Allah has angered. Whenever they're happy, Allah is happy. So when it says in the Holy Quran, Inna Allah yahabbu al muhsineen that means Ali and Alayhi Salam Yahabul Muhsinin. That means the Mahdi Yahabul Muhsinin. That means Imam al Baqir Yahabul Muhsinin. That means all the Imams of the Muhsinin. But here, the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, specifically chose the name Fatima, not the name Muhammad or Ali or Hassan or Hussein. It's because at that time of the era, this is the time where people did not know how to differentiate between the falsehood and the truth. The only way they could is Sakhat Fatima and Rida Fatima, her anger and her satisfaction. And Lady Fatima alayhi salam, she died and she was clearly angered upon people. And history narrates it clearly that she was angered upon those people. That anger is attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's anger. So how did people know the falsehood from the truth during that time? Rasulullah made it clear, Fatima, when she's angered, that's Allah's anger. When she's satisfied, that's Allah's satisfaction. Try to please her. They didn't. So this whole narration, it goes with all Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salam. 
You want to satisfy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, try to satisfy Imam Ali, try to satisfy Rasulullah, try to satisfy al Butash Ma'soom. And it begins with Lady Fatima. She's the key, how you described it. That's the key. So you cannot satisfy all Ahlul Bayt, but keep Lady Fatima in two brackets. It began with her. You reach her satisfaction, and the Holy Quran says, وَرُضْوَانٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرٌ Rudwan, please. Isn't it attributed with Lady Fatima? So when we say Rudwan ibn Allahi Akbar in paradise, who do we see there? Lady Fatima and her satisfaction. That's the biggest satisfaction you have reached. Not Allah's, hers, because it's attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when the hadith says, in Allah yarda lirda Fatima wa yaghdab, yaghdab, yaghdab aw yaskhat. There's two hadith. One that says, yaghdab li ghadabiha, and another hadith says, yaskhat li sakhatiha. They have the same meaning when she's angered. It doesn't mean that Allah gets angry when she's angry and mad when she's mad. No. Rida Allah huwa rida Fatima. So Fatima alayhi salam, her name is Fatima. And Rida Allah, she has another title called Rida Allah. Allah has satisfaction. Ghadab Allah, ghadab. It's like saying dua and Um Hussein. I'm one person. It's like saying when dua is happy, Um Hussein is happy. It's one person. So when Allah says, in, Rasulullah says, in Allah yarda li rida Fatima, Allah has satisfaction and Fatima is one with two titles. So you cannot say I'm going to satisfy for all the ma'sumin except Lady Fatima and put her in two brackets. No, you won't reach it. She's the key. When she's pleased upon you, Allah, you reach Allah's pleasing, his satisfaction. When she's angered, Allah has angered. That's the door. All Ahlul Bayt tried to satisfy Lady Fatima themselves, even Rasulullah, the way he approached her, the way he embraced her. Rasulullah is right there. The anger of Allah is right there. Yeah, you, you, you said how even our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he would be, uh, he would be wanting to please say the Fatima salamu alayhi alayha as well. And she is the key, she is the door, she is the one who is going to help us to enter paradise, inshallah. If she is happy, the rest of the Ahlul Bayt السلام, are happy. If they're all happy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happy. And just like you said that this time where when Sayyidina Fatima sallallahu alayhi alayha, her shahada took place, she was made, she passed away being angered by certain people. And we know this, history tells us this and it's in our narrations. And our key our entry into Jannah is by satisfying our mother, who is also the mother of all the Imams, except for Imam Ali. She's the mother of all our Ahlul Bayt, alayhum salam And she is the one that holds the key for us to enter paradise, inshallah. Now, continuing by looking at Sayyidah Fatima, salamu alayhi alayha, how do we make our mother pleased with us? How do we make Sayyidah Fatima, salamu alayhi alayha, happy with us? And also by being kind to others as well, this surely makes Sayyidah Fatima salamu alayhi alayha happy with us. But in, in essence, how do we make Sayyidah Fatima happy with us? You know, um, we, we discussed how people, they will never be satisfied and pleased. That's one. Two, it has no value. I won't say it's not worth it. It has no value. Allah satisfaction has a value. There's a value to it. So we do not go and, you know, not care about people's satisfaction because, you know, it has no value. So we become rude and disrespectful. No, we don't do that. But if it crosses the line that you have to satisfy Allah and people, they have no worth. Sorry, we're satisfying Allah. We're choosing it. You're never going to be satisfied. If it crosses the line on Allah's cost, on his satisfaction, no. On that cost, no. We're satisfying Allah. We want to reach that. Sorry, you'll never be satisfied upon us. No matter what we do, you'll never be pleased. So when it comes to Lady Fatima alayhi salam, how we reach her satisfaction, we need to reach her ma'rifah. Read about her. About her greatness, her value. You see a lot of people today that everything is human rights. Everything, you have a free platform to say whatever you want to say on social media, wherever you go, it's normal. On social media, people present and put things, content that are very disgusting and they say it's human rights. We can do whatever we want. No one can tell us not to. But when it comes to Lady Fatima alayhi salam, we're discussing her martyrdom, her oppression, her story. Someone makes a movie about her. Someone writes a book about her. You see the world say, shh, no, 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 
no, don't talk about that. Don't mention that you're causing deviation. You're divided. No, we're not. The deviation occurred from there when Rasulullah said, Inna We are trying to please her. We are in an era where we can say anything we want and nothing will happen. It's a free country, free world, wherever you are, wherever you are, people are holding their phones, saying whatever they want to say, showing whatever they want to show. And everyone who wants to perform anything on social media is normal. Go, oh, you're right. I can say what I want. But when it comes to Lady Fatima, alayhi salam, the world stops to say, shh, don't. Don't make a movie. Why? This is a true story. Are we hurting others? We don't want to please you because it crosses the limit of satisfying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're a lecturer. We want to speak about Lady Fatima, her oppression to the world. Some people don't know. Some people have to know. We want to please her. No, no, no. Shh, don't, 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 don't. Because you're not going to please others. We don't want to please others. One, it has no value. Two, they will never be pleased. They will never be satisfied. And we are in an era where everyone is able to speak and say anything is normal. Corruption. Spread it. It's normal. You speak the truth of Lady Fatima, alayhi salam. What happened to her? How she was oppressed? Her story. Let the world know we are in an era where we are able to perform and let the world know what happened to her, whether it's a movie, children's books, you name it, even novels, lectures, let the world know who she was. She's a great lady. No, 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 no. You're going to cause deviation. Don't bring her name. Why? You want to satisfy Allah? Never think that you will exit this world, that you worked hard with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and trying to satisfy him, but you didn't satisfy her. Rasulullah says, search this hadith, search the narration. It's in the Shia books and in the non-Shia books. She's the door. She's the door. Don't even try to please Imam Ali, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, the Mahdi. No. Please her and then begin with the others. Because that reaches Allah's satisfaction and Allah has anger. And this is why... We need to in this holy month of Ramadan because this is the month that we want to repent. This is the month that we want to be close to Allah. This is the key. You want to be close to Allah? Begin first day of Shah Ramadan to the last day of Shah Ramadan being close to Lady Fatima alayhi salam. Build this relationship with her. Don't be narrow-minded and say, no, I'm going to stay like that. If you were like that on the whole path throughout your years, go back and say, okay, before I do, let me read Ma'rifah about her. Let me know about Lady Fatima. Let me know more about her and see who's important to please her or anger her or, or please others who will never be pleased and they will not benefit you. We need to please Lady Fatima alayhi salam. We need to reach her ma'rifah. We need to see what will make her happy. akbar. We need to see that in heaven. And this is the month of Ramadan. This is the month. It's a great time to go back and view whether those who belittle Lady Fatima, because why? Because they want to please others. Go back and do learn this ma'rifah about her. She is Allah's satisfaction and Allah has anger. It's attributed to him. Rasulullah said, Allah wants this way. She is the one who showed the falsehood from the truth. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this holy month of Ramadan to allow me and every viewer to get closer to her, to learn her ma'rifah and to realize that, you know what? We need to please Lady Fatima alayhi salam, whatever pleases her, whether it's narrating her story, whether it's reading about her, whether it's changing these ideologies that we have built within ourselves that, no, 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 don't say her name. Don't say her madhumiyah. Don't talk about her oppression. Don't do this. Don't. She, we need to work hard to please her. And that is by pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Absolutely. And I think it's even in the practical lessons that we can take, that we can instill in the youth and the children of today's generation where everything that we do, if we gift it to her, we do everything that we do, we do for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as a gift to say the Fatima, our mother, and the Ahlul Bayt alayhim as -salam. And in turn, inshallah, pleasing her for every little small action we do, especially in this holy month of Ramadan, where we are attending the majalises and the centers and reading Quran every day. Any good act that you do at iftar time, any dua that you recite, gift it to say the Fatima, salamu alayhi alayha. And in turn, reap her blessings and her happiness and inshallah, with that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happy with us. And just like you said, spreading awareness, 
for the actual truth, for why Sayyidina Fatima sallallahu alayhi when her shahada took place, why she was angered, why she was upset, why in turn Imam Ali alayhi salam was upset, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was upset. So spreading awareness, spreading the truth, and allowing our children as well, who are the next generation, who are going to uphold the truth, who are going to spread the true message, to be aware of what our beliefs are. Like you rightfully said, sister, these are in our Shia books and also in the non-Shia books as well. So the literature is out there. We just have to take the time and the effort to read and educate ourselves and educate the next generation as well, inshallah. Sadly, dear sister, this is all that we have time for today. We have learned so much. And again, this is a very important episode. Like we said, we are in the holy month of Ramadan. And by pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, we grow closer to him. By pleasing Sayyidina Fatima salamu alayhi alayha, we grow closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Tawbah has said, for Allah loves the righteous and the pious people. And inshallah, we can be amongst those that better ourselves in this holy month, that seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We forgive others. And in turn, inshallah, Allah will look upon us in a merciful way as well. Inshallah, we use this month to better ourselves, to grow closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. Thank you so much, sister, for joining us once again. Thank you, dear viewers, for watching us. Inshallah, please do keep us in your du'as. You are always in our prayers as well. We pray for the shifa of all the marid around the world and we pray for the eternal safety and quick reappearance of Abu Labid Imam Zamana, alayhi salam. Until next time, dear viewers, thank you for watching. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.